1920s historic Palestine. World War I has come to an end, and the land is under the control of the British Mandate, making decisions with little regard to the indigenous inhabitants. Facilitated by the British, mass migration of European Jews to historic Palestine is underway. The broken promise of an independent Palestine and the looming threat of becoming minority in their own land leads to tensions between Jews and Palestinians. Disputes between the two over access to the Western Wall in Jerusalem escalate into violence, and riots break out. On the 23rd of August 1929, one such series of riots would lead to the violent deaths of 133 Jews and 116 Palestinians, and signal a decisive moment in the history of Israel and Palestine. It would strengthen the Zionist movement and pave the way for the calamitous events of the 1948 Nakba, the catastrophe. So why was 1929 a turning point? On the 23rd of August 1929, following Friday prayers, Palestinian villagers flocked to Jerusalem, armed with clubs and swords, after hearing rumours that Jews wanted to take over Al-Aqsa. This would signal the start of a bloody two weeks known as Palestinian riots, or al buraq uprising. Tensions between Palestinian and Jews were at a boiling point due to a long-standing dispute over the Western Wall of Al-Aqsa Mosque complex or Temple Mount, a site which holds religious significance to both groups. A year earlier, on the 24th of September 1928, tensions flared when Jews erected a divider in front of the wall during prayer. This act was provocative to Palestinians, as it was seen as evidence of Jewish control over Al-Aqsa Mosque, and led to growing tensions between the two groups. Under Ottoman rule, Jews were allowed to conduct rituals at the site without disturbing the existing status quo. The British Mandate's administration maintained the situation at the site, but Jewish attempts to change this increased. Hostilities boiled over when a group of Jewish extremists marched through the streets of Jerusalem and upon reaching the Western Wall, raised the Zionist flag and began chanting the Zionist national anthem, Hatikva. On the following day, Palestinians launched attacks on Jewish neighbourhoods, but were confronted by British police, who were waiting for them. Planes hovered in the city's skies, and armoured cars from Ramallah advanced towards Jerusalem. News of these events quickly spread to other cities and Arab towns. Enraged crowds marched, with some targeting Jewish neighbourhoods, and others going after British Mandate government centres and the British police. The police began firing at crowds, which led to even more violent disturbances. On the outskirts of the old city, lynchings of both Palestinians and Jews occurred. <laughs> Events reached their violent peak in Hebron. News of the skirmishes in Jerusalem reached the city, and what happened next was devastating. Palestinian attacks killed 67 Jews in neighborhoods and homes, including 24 Jewish students murdered in Hebron's yeshiva student house. Many of Hebron's Jewish community were well established and had had respectful relations with their Palestinian Arab neighbors. More than 450 Jewish lives were saved on that day by 28 Palestinian Arab families who hid them in their homes. The next day, on the 25th of August, Sheikh Abdel Ghani Aoun, the Imam of the Abu Kabir neighborhood mosque, was murdered along with his family by a group led by a Jewish policeman. So what was the impact of the bloody events of 1929? 
Undoubtedly, 1929 invigorated the Zionist movement. Prior to this, pre-Zionist Jewish communities in the Holy Land, including Mizrahi, meaning Jews from Arab countries, lived in relatively peaceful coexistence with their Palestinian neighbours. In Yefa, for example, established Jewish communities of North African origin dressed similar to their Muslim neighbours and spoke the same language. Relations between the two, whilst not always ideal, were generally one of mutual respect. But the influx of Jewish immigrants, mostly from Russia, towards the end of Ottoman rule, disturbed that harmony. European Jews did not observe the local customs, and their arrival and creation of agricultural settlements stirred fears of a Jewish takeover that would push out the Palestinians. In 1907, the Eighth Zionist Congress created a Palestine office, part of the Agricultural Colonization Department in Yefa, with aims of creating a closed Jewish economy. Relations between European and Mizrahi Jews were also tense, as the latter felt marginalized by the growing Zionist movement and blamed European immigrants for undermining relations between Muslims and Jews. But after 1929, everything changed. According to historian Hillel Cohen, the violent 1929 attacks made Middle Eastern and North African Jews, including those pro-coexistence and previously unenthusiastic about Zionism, recognize the Zionism movement as their political home. 1929 pushed them to unify with the new Zionist community in Palestine, who called for Jewish supremacy. It also forced the established Jewish communities to seek protection from Zionist militias. The riots prompted growing numbers of Mizrahi Jews to join Jewish militias, including the Haganah, which would later become the Israeli army. For Palestinians, the Barak uprising marked a shift in British mandate behaviour towards them. British courts imprisoned many Palestinian activists. 20 Palestinians received death sentences, later commuted to life imprisonment, except for three, Atal Zir, Muhammad Jamjoum and Fuad Hijazi. They were hanged in Akka prison on the 17th of June, 1930. In contrast, only one Jew, Joseph Urfail, received a death sentence which was reduced to 10 years, and he was released early. Latest pictures from war-torn Palestine provide these impressions of Haganah forces consolidating areas under their control. What took place in Hebron and Safed influenced a generation of officers who were involved in the 1948 Arab-Israeli war a conflict triggered by the establishment of Israel after the British mandate expired. For Palestinians, the 15th of May 1948 marks the start of the Nakba, meaning catastrophe. The events of the Nakba are described by historians like Ilan Pape as an ethnic cleansing. This included the huge loss of Palestinian land, society, and the permanent expulsion of some 750,000 Palestinians when 78% of historic Palestine was captured by Israel. That even before one Arab soldier entered Palestine on the 15th of May 1948, according to the Israeli, to the Zionist um, intelligence, the Zionist forces expelled hundreds of thousands of Palestinians. The war was used in order to continue the ethnic cleansing that began before the war. But I think what is really important here is to understand that the Arab armies are entering Palestine in order to stop the ethnic cleansing much more than to destroy the Jewish state. It was during the Nakba that Zionist military forces, including the Jewish Ergan, Haganah and Stern gang militias, destroyed 530 villages, killing 15,000 Palestinians in a series of mass atrocities. Dozens of massacres were committed, including the slaughter of more than 110 men and women and children in the village of Deir Yassin on the western outskirts of Jerusalem. Zionist paramilitary commanders who led the brutal attack on the village say it was revenge for 1929. 
Mir Kahana, founder of the radical Zionist Kach movement, defended the massacre, claiming that Arabs from Deir Yassin led the attacks on Jews 20 years earlier. Historian Cohen has deemed this to be inaccurate, but in any case, it shows how 1929 had a profound impact on Jewish militias in 1948. Three months after the Hebron massacre, celebrated historian Hans Cohen, active in the Zionist movement from 1909 onwards, wrote the following letter. I feel that I can no longer remain a leading official within the Zionist organization. Of course the Arabs attacked us in August. We're obliged to look into the deeper cause of this revolt. We've been in Palestine for 12 years without having even once made a serious attempt at seeking through negotiations the consent of the indigenous people. We have been relying exclusively upon Great Britain's military might. Heightened tensions between Jewish and Muslim communities were reflective of Palestinian national, social and economic disillusionment and apprehension about Jewish political dominance. The uprising of 1929 was one of the first significant actions against the expanding Zionist movement in historic Palestine. The bloody events of that year not only revitalized the Zionist movement, but it shaped the warfare ethos of the future state of Israel. It was a formative moment for the generation of Israeli officers who led the violent expulsion of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians 20 years later during the Nakba. Today, there are about 7 million Palestinian refugees and internally displaced people who have not been able to return to their homes. For them, the Nakba never ended. <laughs>